Hi, I'm Catherine, and today I would like to talk to you about finding your center point through heart and breath. And I know we've talked a lot in, in our society about the power of breath and the yoga breath and going deeper through yoga into breathing, but when we really start to look at the breath itself, it, it becomes very alive and we um, start to understand more and more what this uh, age-old tradition of utilizing breath is all about. You know, I learned about breath when I lived in Hawaii because when you're greeted with the beautiful aloha um, and you start looking a little deeper into what that means, you realize that ha means breath and alo means present, to be present, the presence of something, to be present with your breath. And therefore when I greet you and I say aloha, I'm saying that I acknowledge the presence of our breath and the breath, and there's a divinity in that. The breath of God moves through us, is within us, and is interacting. And so it's a very beautiful way to say, I am present with you, I am here, I notice you. And there's a sacredness about that. It's similar to the namaste. Um, so I started really appreciating breath, and I started looking into it a little deeper and saying, okay, yes, we breathe all the time, every day, automatically, but why is it that all traditions, sacred traditions, spiritual traditions, utilize the breath? The breath is the first piece. And so as I explored that, I began to realize that <clears throat> how we interact with our breath really is when we, when we go deeper with that, it's how we're interacting with ourselves, our relationship to self, and how we're interacting with the divine. And how we interact with self, and how we interact with God, with our God, God source, is how we interact with other human beings. So breath is the basis of all relationships. Isn't that interesting? Breath is the basis of all relationship. Indeed, perhaps our breath is our soul. I know in the yoga tradition, it's the gateway, it's the connector to the soul. Um, and indeed, we can only go two or three, four minutes without breath and the soul leaves. It is the indicator for life. Is she breathing? Is he breathing? Is he alive? And if there's a movement and a flow of breath, then there is life. Where there is breath, there is life. But when we are just on automatic control with our breath, if, we, if we're just going through the actions and we're not paying attention, we're not present to the moment, we're not deeply engaging, we're not um, moving that flow through us, yeah, we can be in a very contracted state and we can, we can still be breathing and still be alive. When we are deeply engaging with our breath, we are slowing things down in ourselves to, to do some self-examination, to get present with ourselves, to know the relationship we have with ourselves, to start to clear the space and have the time to have the insights of what we need and what we value and what is missing and how we can better align ourselves and be better than we, we, uh, we were before every day, every moment, uh, moving forward and uh, evolving. And it also allows us to to have this movement in the body that uh, counteracts contraction because the contracted soul, whether it be holding and contracting in the physical body or holding and contracting in the emotional body or holding and contracting in the spiritual body, pulling away from source, those contracted states are states of pain. 
that's where pain resides. We may not even be conscious of it. It may be a subconscious thing. We thought we worked through it, but we're still contracting on a physical level. So to, to move the to use the breath, to move the breath through the all three of those those aspects of ourselves and find the contracted states and open them with the breath to get the the flow, get in the flow again, get things moving, nothing's stuck, nothing's being held back. And that's why a yoga practice of breathing, there's many different breath forms. Um, at Spirit Quest, we, 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 we could teach you those breath forms. And any good yoga studio, I'm sure they, they uh, utilize the breath forms. Any good meditation practice, and meditation is kind of interesting because meditation is not something you do. It's some state of being um, where you go, where you access the state of being. And so what is it you're doing to, to take you there? You're breathing. It is breath that takes you to that state of meditation. But that's a whole separate video. This video really is about maintaining that flow and that flow allows you to find your center point. And your center point is um, the heart chakra is really the center of in the, in the Vedic tradition for the seven uh, system, chakra system, it, it is the midpoint. And when we can realize that the egoic mind and the left brain the brain, the way it talks to us, the way it interacts with us, you know, some research has said that we talk to ourselves 700 to 1400 words a minute. That's a lot of talking and most of that is negative talk. So if we can turn that around and just quiet that, clear the chitta and just clear the space with the breath by deeply engaging, breathing in through the nose, Breathing out through the mouth. And like I said, there's there's many different uh, um, breath forms that can you can learn. I'd be happy to teach you, but. You don't even have to know those to deeply engage in your breath, to take the time and clear the space to do that. And feel your heart center. And what happens is the egoic mind is talking and it's doing its job, that's fabulous. To, we love to have a mind, but it's not who we are. And when we can bring the chatter and the analyzing and the judging of the mind down through the heart, and we can bring the emotions of the belly, the second chakra, up not be ruled by our emotions, but bring that up and filter those two things through the heart wisdom. The heart wisdom is a connection with source. It's a connection with your higher self where you can make sense of the emotions and make sense of the mind. But you, you access that through breath and a meditative state. And then you reconcile and you work through that. And now you're starting to, to Feel where you've been contracted and, and, and release that and get into the flow. And discover for yourself what it is you need. Because all healthy relationships start with ourselves first. And it is to simply feel your feeling. What am I feeling? Just to be aware, awareness. What am I feeling? Okay. And instead of taking that to the victim, oh, I'm feeling sad or angry, therefore, why? Well, because someone picked on me, so we go into the victim mode. No, instead say, what was violated? What heart value was violated? Something I needed. Well, I feel sad someone yelled at me. Yes, victimization. But it, what I really feel sad about is that I was not honored, and I need to be honored, or I need to be respected, or I need to have my voice matter. Um, and when you start asking those questions, when you go from the emotion to the need, then you can say, well, what do I need to do to, to, to achieve that? Maybe you need to remove yourself from some caustic situation, some caustic, toxic relationship. 
maybe you don't need to do anything. Maybe you just need to have more time and space. Maybe you need to have a little conversation with that person or write a letter. Maybe you need to get things right in yourself. But at least you're asking this, the question and you're clearing the space with simply by setting a time to sit and be present with yourself and to breathe and to check in and really ask that question. Your heart is your center point. Your center point is your connection with the divine. Your connection with the divine is your heart's wisdom. So what, however you're operating, if you can make the distinction that you're from operating in an egoic way to operating in a soul source way, then you can say, wow, you can watch yourself and say, where am I now? How am I talking? Where is it coming from? And you will begin to recognize that in other people as well. But this is the healthy flow of the heart center through breath. And it's lovely to bring in sound and other things too, which we'll discuss in additional uh, other uh, segments. But I'm so thankful that you joined me today. And I hope for you that you can dive into that breath more and realize that it's so critical to slowing down, to being present, to paying attention, to honoring yourself, to knowing who you are first and loving yourself because it all boils down to what you choose to do, your behavior, how you react, or you don't react to what's happening to you. And when you're in your center point, you can choose to take the higher road. And you can choose, because you've been working with your breath, you've been working with it, you can choose to be the best you can be. And when you can do that, you can feel good about yourself, and you can begin to find peace and joy. So, blessed be to your center point. Aloha.